Blitz, sponsored by Moxie Credit Union and Michael Rocha with Atlantic Realty. Welcome to the Blitz. I'm Frankie Tovar. I'm Angelina Martin. And we're halfway through the 2019 high school football season. Can you believe it, Angelina? I can't. It's flown by. It's been fun, though. Yeah, a lot of fun games we've covered, and this week is no exception. We have coverage from Hillmont versus Escalon, the TVL rivalry game that everyone in the Valley seemed to be talking about. Now, Hillmont, they walked into their home field looking for their sixth consecutive win. Unfortunately, they walked away with their first loss of the season by a score of 34-21 to 21 because Escalon, they came to play. Yeah, and Frankie, if you just look at the total offensive yards for both teams, it kind of tells you the story of how this game went. Hilmer had 225 yards on the night compared to Escalon's 433. So the Cougars nearly doubled the amount of yards that the Yellow Jackets were able to put up, which was pretty impressive. Very impressive, and if you take a closer look at the stat line, you'll be even more impressed because you'll see that Escalon held Hilmar to only 77 first half yards. Very hard to beat a tough opponent with that type of offensive output. But these two teams, they're not strangers to each other, so uh, it's no wonder it was a hard-hitting matchup. Yeah, and we knew it was going to be a hard-hitting matchup. Both of these teams were undefeated coming into this game. Hillmar's first 5-0 start since 2013, and uh, Escalon, they're undefeated. They're 5-0 for the first time since 2011 when they went undefeated in league. And now these two teams are tied 6-6 overall since 2010, although Hillmar, they have bested Escalon the last three times they've met in postseason play. We'll see if they meet again this year in the playoffs and if uh, Hillmark can come out on top or if Escalon can edge them out and take the series lead. But before we get ahead of ourselves with that type of talk, let's first check out the Friday night highlights. We're starting with Hillmar's second possession of the game. Here's the junior quarterback, Seth Miguel, tucking the ball and dashing for 30 yards. He's inside Escalon territory with a first down. And on the very next play, Miguel hits Joseph Davis right across the middle for a 23-yard pickup. It looks like the Jackets are in scoring mode, but they can't get it done here. That's an incomplete pass to Aiden Azevedo, forcing a 40-yard field goal attempt that is up and wide left, a seven-play drive and no points. Hillmar couldn't get it done on offense, but they get it done on defense on this play. That's Joseph Davis with the interception, holding it up like a newborn baby. On the very next play, Cole Bailey gets the ball and he picks up a huge chunk of yards. He's going, it looks good, but unfortunately for Hillmar, he also fumbles. Escalon recovers on his 46 yard line where Ty Harris, the quarterback, he does his thing. He connects with Cadence Trejo for a Trey Woe 29 yard gain. Then it's Luke Anderson. He's gonna muscle his way down the field for a five yard touchdown, making it six to zero after a missed PAT. And the Cougars keeping their foot on the pedal. Here's Luke Anderson fighting for three yards in the first down. Next up, Caden Christensen. He hits the edge, picks up seven yards and more Woo thanks to a horse collar penalty. Finally, the seven play drive though, capped by Anderson. He finds his way into the end zone from 13 yards out. And that's the second of the night. And after this two point conversion to a wide open Trejo, the score now 14 to zero. And it looks like Harris, he's gonna add to the bleeding right here. He throws down the field, but nope, intercepted by Cole Bailey. He grabs the ball and runs it down the field for a huge Yellow Jackets gain, putting the ball back in their favor. That sets up a four yard touchdown pass from Miguel to Justin Barros, making it 14 to seven with 3.57 to play in the half. Hilmar clawing their way back. And second half action starting with a bang. Thanks to this pirouette sweep to Colton Panetto. Both the defense and the camera were tricked with this one as the Cougar captain scampers 58 yards downfield to make it 20 to seven after a miss PAT. But that was too sweet to watch once. So let's take it back because this is the play of the game. Man, look at that speed. He's untouched and sending Escalon fans into a frenzy. Someone get this kid some water, because he's on fire. No, seriously, get him some water. He's probably thirsty, too. Now Hilmar is looking to answer back, starting with this 16-yard pass from Miguel to Bailey. Then, a few plays later, Trenton Crowley is on the move and racking up 23 yards, sending the Jackets into Cougar territory. Hilmar keeps marching down the field with this 7-yard pass to Davis, who gets the first down, and he almost breaks the tackle. Finally, this 13-play drive ends on a high note with an eight-yard shovel pass touchdown to Crowley to make it 20-14. to 14. Quick thinking there by Miguel. I wonder if that was by design. 
that leap sure looked like it was by design. And here's a better look at this play I've dubbed the Pirouette Sweep. Guess what? It's effective once again. Pinero was running for daylight, and he's barely caught from behind by Davis, but not before he picks up 40 yards. Three plays later, though, Anderson trying to score. Nope, he stopped at the one. Himmar's defense stands strong on the next play, again denying Anderson, but they can't do much about the QB sneak. Harris, he breaks the plane of the end zone, putting Escalon up 28 to 14 after another two point conversion. On the next drive, Hilmar is forced to punt, but it's a fake, or at least it was supposed to be. This punt travels only 11 yards, giving Escalon prime real estate, to which Harris says thank you very much. He finds Panero for a huge 35 yard gain, and he runs down the field swatting away yellow jacket after yellow jacket as he puts the Cougars in the red zone. A couple of plays later, Christensen darts into the end zone with a four yard touchdown, making it that much harder for Hilmar to mount a comeback. It's 34-14 after a missed PIT with just under seven minutes left to play. Here we are now, the final scoring drive of the game. Seth Miguel with a quarterback draw, weaving his way through the defense to pick up 10 yards. And a few plays later, the QB rolls out the pocket and connects with Crowley, who makes the catch, picks up 31 yards, and takes his team to Escalon's five. Hilmar keeping it through the air, looking for Asvito. No catch, but it is P.I., <laughs> so Asvito gets the second chance, a touchdown for four yards out. His first catch of the game, in fact, to make it 34 to 21, but that is the final score. Hilmar falls, Escalon walks out on top. Still undefeated. Now that was a tough loss for Hilmar, but Frankie, luckily they do have a bye week so they can work on some things and get ready to tackle Houston in the following week. Oh, absolutely. And if I know head coach Frank Marquez, I know he'll be whipping them into shape and fixing all those mistakes like you said. Now, before we talk more about these individual stat stars from the game, let's first recognize our sponsors, Moxie Credit Union and Michael Rocho with Atlantic Realty. Are you in search of a loan? Then you need to visit Moxie Credit Union. Whether you need a loan for a house, a car, or any other fun toy, maybe an RV or a boat, head over to Moxie Credit Union on Gear Road where their friendly staff will assist you with whatever your heart desires. And if one of your needs is a new home, well then guess what? You gotta hit up Michael Rocha with Atlantic Realty. Whether you're a buyer or a seller, Michael Rocha will assist you every step of the way. As a buyer's agent, he'll make your ideal home a reality. As a seller's agent, he'll get you top dollar for your home. So contact Michael Rocha now for more information. You can find him online on Facebook and on Instagram. Now, Hilmar, their offense is typically pretty explosive, although you wouldn't know it by watching Friday's game. They couldn't quite get it done. Escalon shut down a lot of their key players, especially Aiden Azevedo, who only had one catch, if you can believe that. Seth Miguel, the quarterback, he went 9 of 18. He gained 115 passing yards. 52 rushing yards and three total touchdowns. Yeah, and unsurprisingly, Escalon's quarterback, Ty Harris, also had a stellar game. He was eight for 15. He had 110 pass yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. Hilmar defense showing off. And then we got to talk about Colton Panero because he balled out on Friday night. Eight carries, 144 yards, and one touchdown. Uh, that's that's stellar. And part of the reason he did so well is because Hilmar was able to shut down Caden Christensen. And people who don't know who Caden Christensen is, he's the leading back for Escalon. He came into the game with the most all-purpose yards of all the Cougars on the squad. He only came away with 14 carries, 53 rushing yards, 18 receiving yards, and one touchdown. That paved the way for people like Panero and for the player of the game, Luke Anderson, who really, really pounded the ball against that Hillmar defense. 24 carries, 113 rushing yards, and two touchdowns. He was the workhorse for Escalon, and so it's no surprise he is the player of the game. Um, it feels good to win. It feels good to win every game, but today felt a little bit different. Losing these guys the last two years in the playoffs and I'm uh, losing to them in the regular season last year, it felt really good to get a victory. To be honest, we played kind of sloppy today, especially in the first half. We picked it up a little bit in the second half, but we just were trying to be a better physical team. Just mm, do our job in every aspect of the game, whether we had to throw the ball, run the ball, just whatever we need to do to get it done. Our offensive line is awesome, man. They get a good push every down, every play, every quarter, and they're really enduring. And then uh, the other backs beside me and our quarterback and our wide receivers, we just have so many weapons, and it makes everyone else's jobs easier when you can just go out there and you don't know who's going to score. You just go out there and do your job. Uh, we just got to take it game by game. We got MC next week. We'll see how that goes, and then we'll go from there. All right, great to hear from Luke Anderson. And I got to say, it was a hard decision on who to pick for player of the game between uh, Anderson and Panero. But in the end, 
Anderson was chosen because he had the most carries. He was pounding that ball, like I said, against Hillmar's defense. And I think he helped soften up that defense for the big plays that Panero was able to execute. Definitely. Now, let's look ahead to next week. Uh, like I already mentioned, Hillmar, they have a bye. Uh, the following week, they're going to be taking on Houston, who just demolished Modesto Christian 55-0. to So that should be a pretty good game. And Modesto Christian, they'll be playing Escalon. Escalon will be hosting them, and Escalon's going to be looking to keep their undefeated streak alive as they chase that TBL title. As for us, next week we'll be at a different game. We'll be covering the Cal home opener for Pittman High, who will be looking for their second win of the season. They came up short against Marin Catholic, shut out 42-0. Uh, unfortunate loss for Pittman. Hopefully they're going to get that second win of the season when we're out there watching next week. And they'll be playing Enox, who was 3-1 after they suffered their first loss of the season against Edison by a score of 48-10. This will be an entertaining matchup for sure. Partly because we'll be there, and another part because we'll also have a microphone on head coach Lance Weckerly. That's I right. Forgot. On the mic, the first one of the season, the first one for Pittman High ever. It'll be a lot of fun. You don't want to miss that. I'm telling you guys, you got to check it out. We'll have that next week at TurlockJournal.com. And, of course, you can find us online on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Turlock Journal. So until next week, I'm Frankie Tovar. I'm Angelina Martin. Good night. Good night.